Welcome back ladies and gents. In this particular teaching video, I'll be looking at 5.3 friction. 5.3 represents chapter 5, section 3 of the Pearson A-level Mass Applied Mass Year 2 textbook. I'm going to start this teaching video by going through this diagram over here. So what we have is a rough surface. We have a box on the rough surface. The mass of the box is mkg. Hence the weight will be mg acting vertically downwards. Because that box is in contact with the surface, there will be a normal reaction acting vertically upwards, which is perpendicular to the contact surface. Suppose A is the applied force on the box. Because the surface is rough, there will be a frictional force um, acting in the opposite direction. So this frictional force is called F max. F max is the maximum friction that is present. Okay? As the applied force increases, the frictional force also increases but then reaches its maximum, and that maximum is called F max. What is uh, the formula for F max? Well, F max is equal to mu, which is the coefficient of friction, multiplied by the normal reaction R. So the mu is the coefficient of friction, and R is the normal reaction. Okay, let's look at three different scenarios. Suppose the applied force is less than F max, the maximum friction. This implies that the box will remain at rest. The next scenario, the applied force is equal to the maximum friction. This implies that the box is in limiting equilibrium. In other words, the box is very close to move, or you could say accelerate. Um, if the applied force is greater than F max, in this situation, this implies that the box will accelerate. Okay, it will accelerate to the right. So that there is the important facts of this particular section. Now I'm going to be going through two exam style questions. Here is exam style question one. A particle of mass 0.5 kg is sliding down a rough slope that is angled at 15 degrees to the horizontal. The acceleration of the particle 0.25 meters per second per second. Calculate the coefficient of friction between the particle and the slope. So I'm going to start by drawing a force diagram. So here is my slope. Here is my horizontal. The angle to the horizontal is given. It is 15 degrees. The particle is on the slope. The mass of the particle is 0.5 kg. Hence, the weight will be 0.5 g acting vertically downwards. This weight has component forces. We can label the component forces. This component is perpendicular to the slope. This component is parallel to the slope. Right angle, and it can be shown that this angle is precisely 15 degrees. We can put in the arrows. This represents the adjacent, so it will be 0.5 g cos 15 degrees. This represents the opposite, hence it will be 0.5 g sine 15 degrees. Okay, now, this particle is in contact with the slope, hence there will be a normal reaction coming out of the particle. So I can label that normal reaction. And we are told that the acceleration of the particle is 0.25 meters per second per second. And the particle is sliding down. So the acceleration is acting down the slope. We can label it as 0.25 meters per second per second. Right. This slope is rough. Because the acceleration is down the slope, friction will be acting up the slope. And that friction, ladies and gents, is F max. F max is equal the coefficient of friction, which is mu, multiplied by the normal reaction R. 
Always remember, when the particle is accelerating, the friction is always at its maximum. So you can label it as mu r. Right, so now our target is to work out mu. So to work out mu, we're going to generate simultaneous equations. We need to first of all work out the normal reaction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to resolve perpendicular to the slope, taking upwards to be the positive direction. Now, the particle is not accelerating perpendicular to the slope, hence the resultant force F is equal to zero. We're going to use this fact to generate an equation. We have R minus 0.5G cos 15 is equal to zero. So R is equal to 0.5G cos 15 as required. That there, I can call it equation one. Right, now I'm going to generate equation two by resolving parallel to the slope. So I'm going to resolve in the direction of the acceleration. The acceleration is down the slope. So that is the direction that I'm going to take as the positive direction. We're going to use Newton's second law F equal MA to generate our equation. So now I'm going to proceed with generating the equation. We've got 0.5 G sine 15. Okay. Minus mu r. Which is equal to the mass of the particle 0.5. Multiplied by the acceleration 0.25. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this. 0 0.5 times 0 0.25 is 0 0.125. That there is my second equation. So I can call it equation 2. And now I need to substitute equation 1 into equation 2 to eliminate the r in order to work out mu. So I've got 0 0.5g sine 15 minus uh, 0 0.5g cos 15 lots of mu is equal 0 0.125. Right, so now I'm going to make mu the subject. I need to rearrange. So if I rearrange, I get mu is equal to 0 0.5 g sine 15 minus 0 0.125 all over 0 0.5 g cos 15. Right, so all I need to do now is put this into my calculator. So if I put this into my calculator to three significant figures, I get 0 0.242. And that there, ladies and gents, is my coefficient of friction. Here is exam style question two. A sled of mass 10 kg is being pulled along a rough horizontal plane by a force P that acts at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. The coefficient of friction between the sled and the plane is 0 0.1, so mu is equal to 0 0.1. Given that the sled accelerates at 0 0.3 meters per second per second, find the value of P. Because the sled is accelerating, friction is at its maximum, F max is equal mu r. Right, I'm going to start the solution by labeling all the forces acting on this sled. So first of all, we've got this force P newtons, which is at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. We can label the component forces by forming a right angle triangle. So I can drop a perpendicular to the horizontal surface. Right, because the arrow is in this direction, over here the arrow will be to the left and over here the arrow will be upwards. This represents the adjacent, so this component force is of the form P cos 45 degrees. This represents the opposite, so this component force is of the form P sine 45 degrees. Now, the sled, the mass of the sled is 10 kg, so the weight will be 10 g acting vertically downwards. Because the sled is in contact with the horizontal surface, there will be a normal reaction coming out of the sled, which is perpendicular to the contact surface. So that there is the normal reaction. Now, if you have a look at the sled, 
it says over here it's being pulled along the rough horizontal plane by a force P. Okay, so it's being pulled in this direction. So the acceleration is to the left. We are given the acceleration, it is 0 0.3 meters per second per second. Because the sled is accelerating to the left, friction has to act in the opposite direction. So friction will be acting to the right. And that friction will be F max. Where F max is equal mu, the coefficient of friction, 0 0.1, multiplied by R. Right, now, if I resolve horizontally, I'm going to have two unknowns. I'm going to have the P and I'm going to have the R. I want to work out P, so I'm going to have to eliminate the R. So I'm going to start off by resolving vertically to work out R in terms of P. So if I resolve vertically, taking upwards to be the positive direction, I know that the resultant force F is going to equal zero because the sled is not accelerating vertically. So we're going to use this to generate our equation. We have P sine 45 degrees plus R minus 10G is equal to zero. So that is the resultant force F, which is equal to zero. Now we can make R the subject. So R is equal 10G minus P sine 45 degrees. We can call this equation one. To generate equation two, we're going to resolve horizontally. So if I resolve horizontally, taking left to be the positive direction, remember the positive direction um, for simplicity, you should take it to be the direction of the acceleration. Now we're going to uh, use Newton's second law, F equal ma, to generate our equation. So what is the resultant force acting horizontally? We have P cos 45 degrees minus 0 0.1 R is equal the mass of the sled, which is 10, multiplied by the acceleration, which is 0 0.3. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. I've got P cos 45 degrees minus 0 0.1 R is equal 10 multiplied by 0 0.3, which is just 3. That there is equation 2. We can now substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So sub 1 into 2. So if I do this, I get P cos 45 degrees minus 0 0.1 lots of my R, which is 10G minus P sine 45 degrees. Close bracket is equal 3. So I need to expand the bracket, rearrange and make P the subject. So if I expand this bracket, I get the following result. Uh, minus g plus 0 0.1 p sine 45 degrees is equal 3. So I can collect the p's, factor out the p, and then make p the subject. Okay, so if I take out a factor of p, I've got cos 45 degrees plus 0 0.1 sine 45 degrees close bracket is equal 3 plus g. Okay, so now I can divide through by this bracket over here. And that there should give me my value of p. Okay, so p therefore has to equal 3 plus g all over cos 45 degrees plus 0 0.1 sine 45 degrees. Now, ladies and gents, please do remember that G is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8. So I can substitute 9.8 into here. And if I do that, I get P equals 16.5 newtons to free significant figure. And that there is the solution to this particular question. Now, in mechanics, it is very important that you learn how to draw a force diagram. If you can draw a force diagram, 
the solution becomes so much more easier. The other thing that I would suggest is to work on the structure of your solution, step by step. Label your equations, substitute your equations, rearrange and you'll get the desired solution. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.